There are numerous definitions to what a bully is and what bullying entails. The National Bullying Prevention Center defines bullying as intentional behavior that hurts, harms, or humiliates a student. The National Center Against Bullying states bullying is when an individual or a group of people with more power intentionally and repeatedly cause hurt or harm to another person or group of people who feel helpless to respond. You didn't a mouthful. But both these definitions include the words intentional, yeah. hurt, and harm, all needed to be able to recognize and label bullying. From physical attacks to hurtful posts online, bullying has many faces. No one is immune to the negative actions of others. It's up to us to be a hero, stop a bully. It's not enough to say it, do it. I was born in Rincón de Roma, Sabascalientes, a small town in Mexico. I moved to the United States when I was just six years old. It wasn't long before the views of immigrants among my peers became clear to me. In school, I struggled with the English language and was criticized for that struggle. From elementary school to junior high, the name calling would never cease to end. I'd walk the halls hearing Mexican burrito and wet back. According to the National Bullying Prevention Center, the reasons for being bullied reported most often by students include race and ethnicity, gender, disability, religion, sexual orientation, and many others. To give specifics, 25% of black students, 17% of Hispanic students, and 15% of Asian students report being bullied at school. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, high school, high school Bullying affects 20% of high school students, and cyberbullying affects 16. When I was 13, I experienced an interaction that will never leave my memory. In eighth grade, I was followed home by a group of my friends and peers. When I was, as I walked home, they kicked the flattened beer boxes at my feet. I passed a house that had rocks in their driveway. Next thing I knew, those exact rocks were flying past me, right where the X is on the map. I crossed South Street, assuming the oncoming, car, the oncoming cars would separate me from the rest. Unfortunately, as soon as I crossed, they did as well. Near my own home, one of the girls from the group pulled my hair. In that moment, I felt more afraid than I ever had in my life. I felt the adrenaline rushing through my body, but I didn't get the chance to run away. She reached for my hair again as she swung her arm toward my face. She used her overpowering bodily force to push me to the ground while the rest of the group surrounded us with their phones out, videotaping. What only seemed like seconds on video felt like a lifetime. I prayed that someone would stop and intervene, but nobody did. With my face on the curb, I heard the cars rushing by. The numerous cars that passed by as I was being attacked speaks volumes about the distance between those who are affected by bullying and those who are not. According to the Anti-Bullying Institute, when bystanders intervene, bullying stops within 10 seconds, 57% of the time. My attack could have been stopped 10 seconds in if someone from the group or driving by stopped and intervened. I don't know what made her stop, but as soon as she did, she ran up the street along with the others. I got up with blood running down my face, and I hurried home crying. My brother's fiance immediately called my mom. As, she, as soon as she came home, she embraced me. Approximately 64% of children who are bullied did not report it, according to the Anti-Bullying Institute. But my mom and I decided that this could not go unchecked, that something had to be done. So we called the police. As soon as he walked in our door, he asked me to share with him what just happened. He took pictures of my bruises and bumps, but in the end said there was nothing much they could do since my attacker was a minor. My mom was desperate to turn such a traumatic incident into a way to help other students, to keep this from happening again. So she reached out to Thomas Inklar a personal injury attorney, and with the help of from Senators Al Davis, Patty Passingbrooks, and many others, we were able to propose an anti-bullying bill to the Nebraska legislator. We named it Frida's Law. This law seeks to criminalize bullying behavior that occurs off school grounds and also seek to hold bystanders responsible. Our goal for Frida's Law was to require that the aggressor sentence include victim impact awareness classes, counseling, and community service. We realized that not only do we need to help the victim, but the bully as well. The Nebraska legislator and Governor Pete Ricketts approved and signed on May 27, 2015, LB 525, Frida's Law. This is one step forward to protecting our kids on and off school grounds. After all our progress, I was still so traumatized. Maribel Inklar, whose office was just down the hall from Thomas Inklar's office, provided me with the support and care that I needed. Bullying can have negative short and long-term effects on both the bully and the victim. 
Students who are rated as the most bullied perform significantly worse academically than their peers. With immediate and proper mental health treatments and support systems in place, victims can stave off the potential long-term consequences of bullying. Without intervention, however, kids are at risk of chronic depression, increased risk of suicidal thoughts, plans, and attempts, anxiety disorders, PTSD, and many others. While it, it, while it can be difficult to empathize with a bully, it is essential that school officials and parents recognize that bullies engage in bullying behavior for a reason. Without proper treatment, bull, the bullying behavior will continue. Long-term effects of the bully include risk of spousal or child abuse, risk of antisocial behavior, substance abuse, and, in, and a decreased likelihood of being employed or educated. After the attack, I feared going back to school. My attacker was only suspended for a week, and I dreaded the day she'd be back. Throughout my school day, I'd have panic attacks whenever people saw, whenever people would look at me and look at my bruises. I remember one day I was walking to my last class when one of my classmates shouted, hey, Frida, I heard you got beat up. His comment put me right back underneath my attacker, right back on that curb. I immediately ran to the counseling office, hiding in fear. As reported by the Anti-Bullying Institute, an estimated 160,000 US children miss school every day due to fear of attack or intimidation by other students. When, it, when the week ended and my attacker returned to school, I wouldn't go outside and play basketball. I wouldn't do the regular things I would go about before this ever happened. I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel safe the part of my day that I feared the most was when the school ended. The possibility of seeing her was high, and I wanted to do nothing more than to escape. My family helped and supported me by making sure that they were on time, and on days that they weren't, my anxiety took over, and I'd call them in a panic, hoping they would be in the parking lot as soon as possible. My family would ask me to go to Walgreens, which is right across the street, but I was afraid she'd be there, so I stayed home. Back at school, I was afraid to eat in the cafeteria. As a way to terrorize me even further, she sat where I was sitting. I always dreaded going to school until my counselor decided to introduce me to the teammates program. She explained how mentees are paired with mentors who can assist in satisfying their needs, and mine included in overcoming my fears. When I was notified that I've, they found a match for me, I was ecstatic. The first day I met Elpedia, we bonded over a game that originates from my country, La Loteria. From that day on, our bond grew. I'm thankful for the resources that are available for students who go through traumatic experiences. Throughout the months, we brought awareness to our newly proposed bill. I relived every single moment of my attack. I did countless interviews, and I just didn't feel like myself. But with the help of my support system, the strength and creation of the bill allowed me to develop, and, LP and my relationship with Elpedia, I am no longer afraid. My mom's activism and determination inspired me to keep fighting and to continue to heal and progress. My involvement and activism in my community grew and helped me heal. But what can we do as a community? What can we do from keeping this happening to any other child? We can learn to accept our differences. We can pull over, put our hazard lights on, and stop an attack. We can stand out from a group, put our phones down, and stand up and be a hero. We can be a hero, stop a bully. Thank you.